OK, so in this problem, who would decide to put a fraction of 121 over 2 um, and ask us to factor it? But you know what? That's actually not so bad. And I, I get with students a lot just to kind of go out on a tangent for some reason. Um, to leave things as a fraction. Don't rewrite them as their decimal form. Leave them as a fraction because it's very, very helpful um, when I need to reduce them or get rid of the fractions. Because in this case, I'm going to need to factor this. And I notice that I have my a is not equal to 1. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I need to get this out not equal to 1. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, remember we're solving, so 0 equals um, 0 equals uh, 1 half x squared plus 11x plus 121 over 2. OK, now, so when solving a problem like this, what I'm going to do is I need to get rid of the 1 half. And one thing I can do, remember when we always tried factoring this out, I can factor out a 1 half. But if I factor out a 1 half, um, I'm going to be kind of messing with this middle term. And that's 22. And it might get a little bit confusing for me. So the best thing that I like to do is, how about I just multiply everything by 2? Because multiplying by 2 times 1 half, that's going to give me 1. right? So I put everything in parentheses. Well, obviously, 2 times 0 is just going to e still equal 0. But now I need to make sure I apply distributive property. And I need to multiply the 2 times each one of these terms. So when I multiply 2 times 1 half x squared, that's just going to leave me with an x squared. 2 times 11x is 22x. And 2 times 121, or 121 over 2, is just going to leave me with 121. And this would have been the same thing if you subtract, if you divide it out of 1 half. But I think dividing out fractions is sometimes a little bit more confusing than for students to multiply by 2. The main important thing was you need to see, what do I need to multiply my 1 half by, or my a, to get it to be 1? And then we just multiply it by everything. So now I look at this equation. I notice that, hey, this 121, that's a perfect square number. That's a r. And perfect squares, remember, when we have perfect squares, then we could possibly have a perfect square trinomial if my b is going to be 2 times the square root of my perfect square number. Well, the square root of 121 is going to be 11. And 2 times 11 is going to be 22. So therefore, this is a perfect square trinomial. And since it's positive, my two roots are going to be x plus 11 times x plus 11. Therefore, now I can rewrite this as x plus 11 squared, and then use my inverse operations on both sides. So 0 equals x plus 11. Subtract 11 on both sides. Negative 11 equals x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you solve a problem with our fractions and a perfect square trinomial. Thanks.